As you would expect, the tank is the bulk of the machine. Most components attached to this and replacing them is doable, although in some cases manufacturers don't make it easy. We're going to remove the components attached and strip it down, starting with the motor. A 10mm bolt is all that's holding this into place. This model only has one. Most will have two or four. We'll come back to this. The dampers or suspension legs provide support to the tank and are held into place by this harpoon pin. We did a video changing these out on a Miele. A similar concept applies to most machines. Check this video out if you want to see the process in full. Squeeze the pin and tap from the top to release. Most are secured to the chassis of the machine by a 10mm nut. Onto the heater, again 10mm nut holding this in. You can see why 10mm is the most sought after socket. This tightens the seal ensuring the machine is watertight. They can be tricky to remove depending on agent machine. A trick I've learned is to pour hot water into the tank. This should help the seal release. Tease it out with a screwdriver. Again, we'll come back to this component. The sump hose allows water to feed into the drain pump. This model has the pressure switch pipe attached. Boiled down, this basically reads water level at machine and feeds that information back to the board. Rare that this pipe or pressure switch fails. If the machine's overfilling, this is where to start. Counterweights, basically just big blocks of concrete that prevent machine walking across your kitchen. We'll just remove these for now and come back to faults later. Just two components left, the dispenser to tank hose and then the door seal. Both held in place via clips. Once both of these are removed, all we've got left is the tank. When it comes to tanks, there's primarily two different versions in front loading washing machines. There's a split tank and a welded tank. The only exception being Miele, which use a fully stainless steel tank all the way through. It's one of the reasons why they're a cut above every other manufacturer that makes washing machines. We've got a comparison video in works where we take a Miele and compare that against a cheaper machine. Subscribe if that's content you want to see in future. Anyway, this is a split tank, meaning rather than having to replace the full unit, we can split this apart and replace whatever components have failed. This is a drum pulley. We use a tool to hold this in place. For once, we don't need a 10mm socket, rather a 17. Hold the pulley in place and then crack that bolt on the back, allowing it to then be removed. When we've got this drum pulley removed, we can see our bearings. These are the most common point of failure for most cheap washing machines. And when they go, they sound like this. Remove about 15 screws to then remove the front half of the tank. After that, we can then remove the rear half and have full access to the insides. Just two components here. We've got the main inner tank and then the drum spider. If you've ever had a washing machine that's done this, that's because these bolts or sometimes welds have failed and that spider will need replacing. Got a better shot of our bearings here. We don't change these out on site individually. It's my understanding that you need a press. Whenever these are changed, we just replace the full rear off. Now we've got drum out of way, we can start on the door seal. Keep it well maintained. Dry it after every wash to prevent this mold build up and leave the door open. Very common for these to get damaged if you're not checking your pockets. Easy enough to change on your own without tools. The inside clip can be tricky for noobs, but as with anything else, it's easy when you've done it a couple of times. The motor. Oh, because I'm from Yorkshire, the motor. The motor deserves its own video. But for this, all you need to know is this is the component that turns the drum. Fairly solid component, rarely fails, although the brushes do wear away over time. When they wear away enough, normally after like five to seven years, machines will stop spinning. As you can see, they're spring loaded and easy enough to change out. Sometimes all you've got to do is tip the machine back to access. The brushes make contact with this commutator, providing an electrical charge to the windings. Higher end machines will likely have an inverter motor with a dedicated board, but again, another topic for another video. Back to the dampers, as you can see, these have got resistance. When they fail, they've got no resistance at all, like this. Onto the dispenser, couple of three parts here. We've got the soap drawer, the dispenser tray, and the valves. The water inlet pipe attaches to these valves and is fed from the mains. Water comes in, through the dispenser tray, through the tank hose, into the tank. On this dispenser, there are little holes for the water to pass through. These can build up with mold over time and restrict flow, so make sure you keep them clean. 
these valves can be tested, grab a multimeter, stick it on continuity setting. We're looking for a reading in K ohms. Both valves should be reading around the same reading. 3.87K for both valves. These should be working fine. Back to counterweights, not much to say about these, although on some hot point and Vestel machines, the bolts can come loose over time, causing a knocking or even the counterweight to smash completely. Flying through these, we've only got a couple of parts left. Onto the heating element, this component in the back is an NTC or a negative temperature coefficient, basically a sensor that reads temperatures. The resistance reading of the NTC goes down as the temperature increases. You can see I'm warming this up with my hand and that resistance reading is dropping. This information is fed back to the board and the machine acts accordingly. These NTCs very rarely fail. I'd rather you know how to test them for that one in a thousand time just so you don't get caught up. The heating element can be tested for both insulation resistance and continuity via the info on the back. To keep it simple though, as long as we've got a continuity reading and the machine's not tripping the electrics, this element should be fine. Drain pump does exactly what it says on tin. It pumps water out down drain. Connected to sump, which is then connected to the tank. Remove this filter cap. This is where all your blockages are going to collect and it's probably the most common fault that you're going to run into with washing machines. This is the impeller. It's magnetised and should bounce back when manually span. We can remove this. The bulk of the pump is an electromagnet. When a current's pass through, it attracts the magnet on the impeller, spinning it round, forcing water out of the machine. You can see, with the impeller removed, it's not bouncing back because there's no magnet to attract to. Board, not much to say, the brains of the machine. Check these for damage, it's the only real test you can do, other than testing to make sure power's getting to them. This model of machine's only got one board in the display. Most machines will have two, and they're normally located in bottom left-hand corner, towards the back. Door lock, pretty self-explanatory, locks the door. It's the first step of any washing machine cycle. So the first thing a washing machine will do is activate the door lock. If it's not getting past that point, yeah, you, you might end up looking at this. This door lock, when a current's passed through, activates the actual door lock, which slides back into place and connects to that pecaron door. There's a couple of components in this door here. We've got the glass bowl itself, the inner ring, the outer ring, and then the door handle. If you're ever taking these apart to replace anything, I recommend you take a load of photos because some models can be a pain to get back together. And that's it. That's every component of a washing machine. If you've watched this far, I hope you've learned something. I plan to carry on pumping content like this out, just to hopefully give you a little bit more information and a little bit more confidence on fixing machines. I want to give a big shout out to everybody that subscribed, liked, followed and left a comment. It's unbelievable. We're going to keep pumping this content out. And yeah, hopefully you've learned something. Nice one.